what would you recommend in the process of filming and editing content? So I guess kind of the the step by step, and at least with what I was trying to explain to him is he has this product and he wants to be able to put information out on social and just didn't know where to start. And so with him specifically, it's like something you can kind of, it's a magnetic strip you can put around your house. So I was like, write down all the different places that are in your house that you're using this product. So whether mm -hmm. it's, even if it's just something like tint, like kind of go through and show the different reasons why somebody would have tint. And so it's kind mm -hmm. of, how do I create content out of thin air? We've talked about this before. If you don't have anything, where do you start? And it's, show it in use and kind of explain like, this is what it does in this situation. Here's how it does in this. Yep. One. I and often then, say to people, one of the best inspirations for knowing maybe a video to shoot or a piece of content to create is think about the questions you get asked by your customers or potential customers all the time, and then create a video to answer those questions. Fact is, if you have a client or a customer that's asking the question, there very well might be a lot of other people with that same question. So utilize those questions you're getting and you're answering as an inspiration to say, maybe I ought to create pieces of content. So when somebody asks you something, maybe jot it down and use that as kind of a hit list of things you need to create a piece of content about. As far as I know you had said, um, the filming and editing, I mean, you do a lot of the editing for iMagnet. Um, so I would be a big I would be a big proponent of telling people to capture more as opposed to less and things can be edited together and things like that. I think a lot of times people uh you know feel like they need to catch everything. And a lot of times you create a video that's long and drawn out. I think people have become very proficient at quickly, you know, uh you know, quickly dissecting and understanding a video. So I don't think videos take anywhere near as long as we think they do to set up and explain it to people, especially in the age of TikTok where people are picking up, you know, they're, they're digesting the entire video and just quick snippets. So I think a lot of times I think we tend to overthink how much needs to be in the video and ending up shooting much longer and more drawn out videos than are needed. Yeah, I would say you hit the nail on the head for the second part of what I was going to say was with him specifically, it was kind of what's the setup. And that kind of goes along with accessories. And I'll continue my like show and tell is that you can get these things for your phone where it just kind of like holds it in place. And it's a tripod and it's about five feet tall. And so like with him, I just told him, set one of those up, like explain what you're doing throughout the house. And then uh, to mirror what you just said was like, take the next 10 questions of of things that you are most commonly asked that you can answer to whoever is going to have that question when they first see your product uh, or service online. And then yeah. kind of just sit down at a desk, set this up and just talk to them and kind of explain it. And for me, what I told him and kind of what we do too, it's like, just put everything out. And then once you have a video editor, or if you know how to kind of cut these down, uh, you can kind of trim up and take out ums and ahs and all the other like little pauses and stuff that might happen. And I do a fairly decent job with that with some of the stuff that you've seen on Instagram now almost yeah. every day. So I'll take this whole thing. We'll post this on YouTube. I break up the questions and understanding how to cut that up. It's one of those. I think I've done a video of how you can trim the endpoints as far as within iPhone to kind of. All right. Here's how I want to have this segment of the video and create yeah. a new video from that. And then put it into like a video editor if you want to add in the the text, the kind of the closed captions that are going to show up. And yeah. if you want to put a logo on top of us, split this screen in half. So there's a lot of different things after the fact, but essentially just doing the basics from the beginning and then kind of slowly going there. This is I used to make fantasy football videos for my buddies years ago, and I realized like, hey, this is something that people need. So it's not going to happen overnight. It's definitely going to madden you with some of the stuff yeah. of like trying to edit like little micro seconds yeah. the stuff that i do now uh and so it, it takes time to kind of get into that process but one if you have a question reach out but to me it's i try to put content out that's going to like sh explain like hey here's how you do a slow-mo here's how you do time lapse here's how you can edit and crunch that video down to to take out that five minutes or five minutes five seconds where you're kind of waiting to see if the video is on so it's tricky. Well, I also, yeah. I also tell people too, you know, videos can always be edited. I've seen a lot of people, they'll 
go to shoot a video, just like what you just said with regard to, uh, you know, just like what you just said with regard to um, setting up a tripod with the, the camera. And then they'll go to like, say something, and then they make a mistake. So they go and stop it. And then just they, it it's just like, just keep, <laughs> just start over. We can all, you can always go in and just trim it to the mm -hmm. point, the new starting point. So just get it on tape and then it can be trimmed or edited from there. The other thing I would, I would um, make a point of saying with regard to videos is they don't always have to be super polished. I mean, a lot of people, I think, feel like they need to be this polishing, depending on what the type of video is, there's certainly a place for produced polished videos. But in most cases, if you're producing something to answer questions on social media and things like that, a very raw, transparent, you know, like you're talking to the camera, just a basic video could do really well. And then, you know, finally, the other thing that um, I would say is, you know, the subtitles are critical. If you're like me, a lot of times at night, if I can't sleep, my wife's in the bed next to me, I might be watching social media and watching a video. And if it doesn't have su subtitles, I have no idea what's going on in the video. But I could watch your video if it has subtitles and still know what the video is about, even if I have the sound on my phone completely off. So today, and I, I don't think I'm alone in using a cell phone that way. I think a lot of people do. So definitely make a point to put subtitles in as well.